Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi Rabbil alemin. Vessalatu vesselamu ala seyyidin mursalin seyyidina Muhammed. Ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ve sellem teslimen kethira. Rabbana lakal hamdu. Kema yanbagi li jalali ve çek ve li azimi sultanik subhanik ala nüksi tenan alayka entkama thilayka ala nefsik. Allahumma salli ve sellem ve barik ala seyyidina ve habibina ve kurrati ayunina Muhammedin ve alihi ve sahbihi ve sellem tesliman kathira. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Imam Zayd Shakir and we're here to continue our journey through Lata'af al-Ma'arif lima fi muasim al-Ami min al-Wadha'if l-Ibn Rajab al-Hanbali. So we're here, my dear brothers and sisters, on this evening to continue our journey through the subtleties of knowledge concerning what each season of the year consent, contains of religious duties. Alhamdulillah. So Alhamdulillah, as we approach the last 10 days of Ramadan, uh, there's a section uh, that deals specifically with that. And that section is called Al-Majlis Surabi' Ramadan. So the fourth session, literally the fourth uh, gathering or sitting, uh, for we translating it, translating it as session, the fourth session, dealing with uh, re remembering the last ten nights or days of Ramadan. Uh, generally, the day in its entirety, but specifically the night. Allah Ta'ala give us tawfiq. And each of the sections opens with the hadith. And then the during the explanation, there's various verses of poetry that are introduced along with Quranic ayat, along with a hadith to support the original hadith. So we're just looking primarily at the poetry. So the poetry, the, the hadith rather that opens this ses uh, session is the following. أن عائشة رضي الله عنها قالت كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا دخل العش شد مئزاره وأيقظ عفوا شد مئزاره وأحيا ليله وأيقظ أهله حديث متفق عليه <coughs> So Aisha may Allah be pleased with her relates that when the last ten uh, nights uh, specifically here when the night last 10 nights of Ramadan entered the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would tight, literally, literally tighten his waist wrap or his lungi this in Bangladesh his mitzar as the Arabs say his lower garment and that means two things uh, the ulama mentioned two things one is he got very serious about his worship. He was always serious, but very, very uh, uh, devoted, extremely devoted in his worship. So we say that like, he tightened his belt and got down to work, got down to business. And another interpretation, he would avoid any uh, relations at night with his wives, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So these nights were for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So إِذَا دَخَلَ الْعَشْرُ شَدَّ مِعْزَارَهُ وَأَحْيَا لَيْلَهُ And he would stay up for most of the night. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. أَحْيَا لَيْلَهُ So his night, he would be uh, literally alive during the night, during his night, but alive with worship and devotion and Qur'an, and Salah, and Dhikr. So, And he would wake up his wives. As-salat, as-salat. So he would call out, As-salat, as-salat. Prayer, prayer. Like it's time to pray. It's to pray, it's not time to sleep. So during the latter, uh, the after the early part of the night, he would awaken his wives. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so this is a time for us to really strive because these are the days where it's likely Laylatul Qadr is to be found. And we'll discuss that a little later, the implications of that. So, uh, in the Rajab radiallahu 
he mentions uh, some verses related to not sleeping during these nights. So he says, amongst other things, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <clears throat> O one sleeping during the night, for how long will you sleep? So he said, get up and worship, O my beloved. The appointed time is drawing close. And so these nights, there, there's, there are many appointments the time when Allah might open our hearts to pour knowledge and love, love of Him into our hearts. The time that one of those breezes of His mercy might blow and touch our hearts. Ta'arrudu ila nafahat rahmati rabbikum fa'inna lillahi nafahat rahmatihi yusibu biha man yasha'u min ibadi فَمَنْ أَصَابَتْهُ سَعِدَ سَعَادَةً لَا يَشْقَى بَعْدَهَا أَبَدًا لَا لَهِمَّ اللَّهِ First part is hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. Expose yourself to the gentle breezes of your Lord's mercy. And those breezes during the year, they don't blow any time with more strength, with more consistency than during the last 10 nights of Ramadan, with the possible exception of the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. La ilaha illallah, expose yourself. How do we expose ourselves? With our prayer, with our Quran, with our Siyam. But at night, Taban, we're not continuing to fast at night. With our prayer, our worship, our devotion, our Quran, our Arad, al Qar. That's how we expose ourselves to those breezes. For verily Allah has gentle breezes of his mercy. He touches therewith whomsoever he pleases of his servants. Whoever is touched by one of those breezes. Whoever is touched by one of those breezes experiences bliss and happiness that's so profound they're never saddened for the rest of eternity. Allah. These are those nights. So, and take from the night and from the time that it contains a designated portion of worship. At night, I'm going to read a juz of Quran. I'm going to stand for all 20 rakats of tarawih. I'm going to engage in these specific routinized action. That's the weird. And the weird has many benefits. One benefit of the weird, if one is consistent. So you read a juz of Quran. Let's say that takes half an hour. Okay, that takes half an hour. So that means of the 24 hours, half an hour is spent in your weary. So after for 48 years, so 24 hours in a day, after 48 years, an entire year has been taken from our hisab. Because even if you're inattentive, your tongue can engage in sin and backbiting. And so you add to that half an hour of Quran, half an hour of dhikr. Now, in 24 years, an entire year has been taken off of your hisab. And then you add to that your salah. Say you combine your salah, that takes an hour a day. In 24 years, two years have been taken off of your hisab. So that's the value of the weird. That's one of the values of the weird. When your tongue is preoccupied with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it cannot be preoccupied with lying, backbiting, slandering, uh, uh, false speech, etc. It can't be because it's involved. Even if your heart is inattentive, your, your tongue cannot sin. La ilaha illallah. 
So he says, take from the night and from the time it contains a weird, a specific, routinized act of worship. Uh, when uh, the the sleepers are slumbering, ma after ida is not negating. The sleepers are not sleeping. Ma after ida, this is for students of Arabic, is always za ida. Ma ba'da ida, ida, za ida. So it's, it's increased for emphasis, but, or for poetic meter, but it is not, it has no negative or negating meaning. We mentioned last week uh, the, the, the verse, Tarahu ida ma jittahu mutahallilan. So you say, you don't say, you see him, if you don't come to him, ida ma jittahu, if you don't come to him, ida ma jittahu mutahallilan, you see him, when you come to him, lit up mutahallilan, kanahu ta'atihi, illa ni anta sa'ilu, and here, uh, we're then ida ma haj'al ruqadu, when the slumbers are sleeping. So you're doing your weird. You're up and you're standing and you're having intimate discourses with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while someone else is sleeping their night away. May Allah ta'ala give us tawfiq. The one who sleeps until his entire night passes. Lam yablaqil manzila aw yajhadu will never reach the degrees of the righteous, nor have they exerted themselves. وَيَجْهَدُوا عَنِ jihad, اجْتَهَدْ اجْتَهَدَ He's not exerted himself in a way appropriate for one who knows the right that Allah has over us. وَجَاهِدُوا فِي اللَّهِ حَقَّ جِهَادِهِ Strive in the way of Allah as should rightfully be the case. And what, what right does Allah have over us? We could begin to mention all of the blessings we enjoy. And there's a right that Allah has over us in each and every one of those. Alhamdulillah, Allah is gentle, latif. So he doesn't demand the full right. He just demands us to be serious and to do our very, very best. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. Now, uh, so the one who sleeps their entire night doesn't stay up a little late to worship or get up a little early to worship. They will never reach the high ranks. Nor will they be listed amongst those who strive and struggle against their nafs. Say to those who have true intellect, the people of consciousness and awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's a treasure, a great treasure waiting to present it, be presented to you at the time of the appointment. So if we knew, if this isn't true, tell me in the chat. Communicate it somewhere, dispatch a pigeon or something with a note. If we knew that there was a basket full of gold and pearls and emeralds and silver, a big healthy basket waiting for us, and someone said, if you get up at 3 a.m. and go to such and such place, you'll find this basket the size of a watermelon filled with gold, silver, pearls, emeralds, diamonds. There's not a single one of us who would not set our alarm clock, depending, let's say this place was half an hour away for two in the morning. There's not a single one of us who would not set their alarm clock for two in the morning to make sure they're there at three to receive that basket of precious stones and valuable uh, metal. What's more valuable? The pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or that basket of gold and silver, etc. Just as there's no one of us who will remain sleeping 
and not go to the place where that gift was promised, there's not a single one of us who would say that that gift is more valuable than the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, than the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what are we doing, my dear brothers and sisters? So he goes on. Uh, so say, say to those who possess true intellect, the people of conscious awareness of Allah, a treasure is waiting to be presented to you at the appointed time. These nights, brothers and sisters, the appointment lies within those nights. May Allah ta'ala give us tawfiq and taysir and kabul. May Allah ta'ala give us kabul. May Allah give everyone long lives filled with much, much, much barakah. والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وآله وصحبه So then he he proceeds and he he mentions uh, how the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and the Adi theme are enriched by nearest to Allah subhanahu wa taala by the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa taala they're enriched from needing food or drink. They don't, they don't need food or drink as people who don't have that nearness. So he, he, he discusses this particular issue. And we'll read a little from the text before we get to the, the poetic verses, inshallah. So he says, uh, 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 وصحيح أنه إشارة إلى إلى ما كان الله تعالى يفتحه عليه في سيامه وخلوته بربه. So he says if actually eating is something that would negate the fast, it's correct that this is an indication. This is an إشارة. This points to the fact that uh, what Allah Most High has opened up. For the servant in his or her fasting and in his or her privacy and intimacy with Allah, this is a this is a point that many people overlook. The literal khalwa is is the the khalwa, the atikaf, but also fasting itself is a khalwa, in the sense that we are alone with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in the knowledge of whether we're fasting or not. And so only we know and Allah know, uh, knows, rather, if we're fasting. No one, no one else knows. And so when we step back and we consider that, this helps to cultivate an intimate relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is one of the values of the fast. Like this is a secret between myself and my beloved. This is a secret between myself and my beloved. And so it's a form of khalwa. I'm all alone in this knowledge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether I'm fasting or not. And so he says uh, what Allah opens up for the servant during his fast or hers and his being isolated with his Lord, وَخَلْوَتِهِ بِرَبِّهِ لِمُنَاجَاتِهِ وَذِكْرِهِ مِنْ مُوَادِّ الْأُنْسِهِ وَنَفَحَاتِ قُدْسِهِ For the intimate discourses that he can have with his Lord and his remembrance from the, the spiritual resources, that nearness, intimacy, and the, the gentle breezes of his holiness. فَكَانَ يَرِدُ بِذَلِكَ عَلَى قَلْبِهِ مِنَ الْمَعَارِفِ الْإِلَاهِيَةِ وَمِنَحِ الرَّبَّانِيَةِ مَا يُغَذِّهِ وَيُغْنِيهِ عَنِ الْتَعَامِ وَالشَّرَابِ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ And so that, that, those intimate discourses with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his remembrance, the gentle breezes of his holiness. All of these things brings to the heart of the believer degrees of divine knowledge and insight 
and, and, and lordly gifts that relieve the person from having to eat or to drink. Because when, when, when you're in love, you lose sight of time. When the love is deep and passionate, you lose sight of time. You, you skip meals. You're on the phone all night with your, or all evening with your beloved. You forgot all about dinner. You're not thinking about dinner. Just hearing the words of my beloved nurtures me and nourishes me. Forget dinner. I can eat dinner tomorrow. So this is, this is the reality that the Arifin and Ashiqin have of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So one of the poets said, لَهَا أَحَدِيثُ مِنْ ذِكْرَاكَ يَشْغُلُهَا عَنِ الطَّعَامِ وَيُلْحِيهَا عَنِ الزَّادِ لَهَا بِوَجْهِكَ نُورٌ تَسْتَطِيءُ بِهِ وَوَقْتَ الْمَسِيرِ وَفِي أَعْقَابِهَا حَادِي إِذَا شَكَدْ مِنْ كَلَالِ السَّيْرِ أَوْقَدَهَا رُوحُ الْقُدُومُ فَتَحْيَا عِنْدَ مِيْعَادِي لا نهم الله that she has conversations of your remembrance that preoccupies her from food and distracts her from preparing for the journey. She has in gazing upon your face a light that illuminates, that illuminates her face at the time of departure and the, and at the time of departure as the caravan has it's the one urging on the camels. So she gets energy and is urged on by the light of your face. If she complains of the of fatigue of the journey, then the, the, the spirit of advancement has brought her, uh, the spirit of advancement that's promised, the, the promised spirit of advancement to her brings her alive at the time, uh, at the appointed time. So the upshot is, when, when we are reading the Qur'an, we're conversing with our Lord. Or we're reading, as we referred to earlier in a previous session, we're reading love letters, communiques of love from our Lord. And this is why the one who is blessed with an illuminated heart, could read the Qur'an all day. The only thing to top, stop them is their, their worldly responsibilities. There's no fatigue. Uh, one, of the, one of the people who claimed to so wolf, Bismillah uh, made a statement along these lines, La taklifa ba'd al wusul. That there's no response, religious responsibility after arriving, which is totally ridiculous because no one arrived to the degree that the Prophet ﷺ arrived. And the Prophet ﷺ never claimed that he was no longer religiously responsible. In other words, he no longer needed to pray. Prayers for you peons who are still out there struggling against your nafs. But as for me, the grand poobah, I have arrived and conquered my nafs, therefore I no longer need that means. Junaid, rahimahullah, he said, wasalu, wasalu ila saqar. He said, they arrived, all right, they arrived to hell. So that's not true. But there's a the same calf lamb, that tech leaf. There's another word from the same roots that is true. So la tech leafa bad al wusul false. La kulfata bad al wusul true. There's no burden in worship after arriving. After we attain to the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's no burden in love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's no burden in undertaking our religious responsibilities because we're powered and fueled by love. 
were powered and fueled by love. And may Allah give all of us tawfiq and taysir and kabul. Uh, so Ibn Rajab goes on to say, That dhikr is the staple food of those who've ex who have experienced the reality of Allah. It re relieves them of the need to eat and drink. Not to say that they permanently starve themselves. No, but the, the, the drive. So they eat to sustain themselves, to keep themselves going. But the drive for food is, is of effaced by the longing for their beloved. So they don't notice their hunger. So yes, they eat, they drink. Some fast uh, all of the days of the year, year after year, except the days when it's impermissible to fast. But generally, they eat, but the drive is not there because their, 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 their spirit possesses the greatest drive, not their body. The body has been overcome by the spirit, and the spirit needs no food or drink. The spirit needs Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the spirit is pushing them towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they give the body its right, but the drive, the spirit, and the drive, the the passion of the spirit has overtaken the drives and appetites of the body. So one of the poets said along those lines, and Rabbi ida bamatu ila ma'i wa kuti ida aradtu ta'ama, that you are my uh, you 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 pro, you placate my thirst when I long for water, and you are my staple provisions of staple food if I desire food. You are my nourishment when I desire food. Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is their water and Allah is their food. Allah is their objective and Allah is this, their longing. Allah is the object of their passion. Qulillah. Proclaim Allah and then leave them playing around in their empty sport and frivolity. May Allah Ta'ala give us tawfiq and taysir and kabul. May Allah Ta'ala elevate all of our stations. May Allah Ta'ala give us all a high, high station. Bismillah. So uh, the, the fruit of fasting, <clears throat> the most prominent fruit is taqwa. By the testimony of the verse in the Quran, which introduces several verses related to the fast. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu kutiba alaykum usayamu kama kutiba ala alladheena man qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. O oh, you believers, fasting has been ordained for you as it was ordained for those who preceded you in order that you will gain conscious awareness of Allah. And it's not just any empty consciousness or awareness. There are a lot of Muslims that are caught up in this thing called mindfulness. We need mindfulness. Let's do a mindfulness exercise. And, and so it's, it's a dhikr without Allah. That's what mindfulness is. So all you folks curious as to what I'm talking about. Uh, it's, it's basically a, a Buddhistic, Buddhistic form of dhikr. It's, it's dhikr without Allah. And so, it, 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 as they say, when I was growing up, there was a popular singer who had a song at the time. I was a Muslim, so I, I could listen to that stuff. But I relate it for a moral as the, the, the companions, they would relate jahli poet, poetry to make a, a, a point. Even the Prophet some pointed to the poetry of Labid as being truthful. In any case, and that song was nothing from nothing leaves nothing. Nothing from nothing leaves nothing. If you want to empty your mind of everything and attain to nothingness, you'll be left with nothing. 
if you fill your heart with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you'll be you will gain everything. You will gain everything. If only they knew. If only they knew. May Allah give us tawfiq and taysir and qabul and bless us with dhikr. With dhikr. Like real dhikr. Remembrance that fills our hearts with love. Because if, if, you, if you're left in nothing, let's clear our minds. Let's do mindfulness. If, you, if there's nothing as the object of your reflection, there's no foundation for love. You can't love nothing. You can't love nothing. But if Allah is your objective, then there's a foundation for love. And if you are blessed with the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will have bliss that you'll never get. You'll never get from mindfulness. You'll never get from LSD. Apologize for mentioning that. You won't get from anything in this world. The joy and the bliss that you will get from the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But that, need, that has a foundation. And if nothingness is your goal, there's no foundation for love. They love him and he loves them. May Allah give us tawfiq. So he shifts to the, so we mentioned taqwa. This is the objective of fasting. And so, but taqwa is, is the adornment of the heart and not the adornment of the body. It's the adornment of the heart. And so he, he starts, Ibn Rajab, the author, transitioning into a discussion of taqwa, but taqwa at a deeper level, at a deeper level. Allah give us tawfiq and bless us to attain to, to taqwa. And so he says in, in prose, That outer beautification will not be complete until there's inner beautification. And the inner beautification is the foundation. We must empty out, empty out anything that's dirty, vile, inappropriate before we adorn ourselves with outer or inner beauty. So he said, uh, and that is with repentance and with remorse towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, be Allah most high, and, and cleaning himself from the filth and the dirt of the world, of sin rather, the filth and dirt of sin. Because outer beauty with inner uh, desolation doesn't benefit in any way. So we could put a sandal pin on our lapel, we could put a scarf over our shoulder, we could have the best turban, the cloak, the mantle, we could have everything on the outside, but if our inside is corrupt, that benefits nothing. La yughni shay'a. La yughni shay'a. That doesn't benefit us in any way. May Allah give us tawfi. Look at the timrain, the timraini, the timrain, uh, the one with two shabby garments. He's pushed away from doors, comes to knock on the door. Uh, what, what are you doing here? You bum, get away from my door. 
when the Prophet praised him for his piety. So the outer was shabby, the outer was dirty, but the inner was pure. That's what counts at the end of the day. Ideally, we have both outer and inner beauty. Ideally. May Allah give us tawfiq. Tawfiq and taysir and qabul. So then he brings a line of poetry. إِذَا الْمَرْءُ لَمْ يَلْبَسْ ثِيَابًا مِنَ التُّقَى تَقَلَّبَ عُرْيَانًا وَنْ كَانَ كَاسِيًا لَا نِهِلَ اللَّهِ he said, if the person doesn't wear the garment of righteousness, he goes around naked even if he's well clothed. He's naked even though he has clothes. May Allah give us tawfiq and taysir and kabul. La Allah. In this regard, the Eid is not the day when we put on our beautiful clothes. The true Eid, that's Eid. You wear your best. Before I converted to Islam, I grew up in a Christian family. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I grew up in a Christian family. And so when we went to church, they would say, you have to wear your Sunday best. So for Eid, for Jumu'ah, we shouldn't go to e Jumu'ah with a t-shirt on, ripped up jeans. We should wear we should wear our best clothing. We're going we're going to stand before the symbolic rep representative of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The one who stands on the mimbar in a sense is standing on the mimbar of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Yaqumu maqamahu is taking standing in place of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so we're standing and we're sitting and listening to that person with shabby clothes. It's not appropriate, brothers and sisters. May Allah give us tawfiq. So anyway, but Shibli. Rahimahullah, uncle of Al Junaid, uh, he mentions that the real Eid is not the day that we put on our nice clothes. That's Eid. The real Eid is when we adorn our hearts and our souls with elevated, exalted realities and character. That's Eid. So they say, قالوا غدا العيد ماذا أنت لابسه؟ They say tomorrow is Eid. What are you going to wear? فقلت قلعة ساق جبة جرعة. He said I'm going to wear a an, a robe of of honor and and a a a coat that involves a hearty drink of divine love. فقر وصبر هما ثوبان تحتهما patience and and repentance of our poverty rather and in poverty meaning acknowledging our need for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that poverty so acknowledging our need for Allah and patience these two are true these two are garments which beneath them tahtahuma qalbun yara ilfahu al wal jumu'a is a heart that sees intimacy with Allah as Eids and Juma. So the heart, it's Eid and it's Juma. These are the true holidays. Ahra al malabisi and talqal habiba bihi. So the the most appropriate garments for you to meet your beloved with. Yama tazawri fi thawbilladhi khala'a is the day of the day that you visit your beloved is the garment that uh, involves casting off all negativity and sin. Uh, all of time, all of my time is as if I were in sin 
if my aspir if my hopes are not fulfilled or I do not find my hopes my hopes are absent but in good English my hopes are not fulfilled and Eid is just something that I've seen and heard about in the past because going forward after I've been enlightened and realized the true essence of things Eid is not this physical thing that's Eid at one level and it's wonderful and it's beautiful and it's shukr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's takbir some people say the takbirat, this is an indication of Eid. So, and to that you extol the greatness of Allah for what He's guided you to the fast. He's guided us through faith and belief and affirming the sunnah to the fast of Ramadan. وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ And the shukr are fasting the six days of shawwal. Why? Because al-shukru min jins al-amal. Shukr is categorical to the... Al-shukru min jins al-ni'mah. Afwan. Al-shukru min jins al-ni'mah. Shukr is categorical to the blessing. So we've been blessed and given this great opportunity with Ramadan. To, to gain how much it, unimaginable edger. A siyam no'an min as sabr. Fast, and we mentioned this earlier session, fasting is a manifestation of patience. What's the reward of patience? إِنَّمَا يُوَفَّ الصَّابِرِينَ أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِهِ إِنَّمَا يُوَفَّ الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِهِ سَابِ The fasting, the patient ones will be given their Reckoning their reward rather with no numerical limits. What's the reward of fasting? All the actions undertaken by the child of Adam, the reward is multiplied 10 times, 700 times, many times over there and above that. And Allah says, except fasting, that's mine. I will reward the servant with it. So fasting is exempted from those deeds. Every action undertaken by the child of Adam. Uh, that reward is for them. And those rewards, how they have some limit. There's one action. It has no numerical limits on its reward. Except fast, that's mine. I will reward the servant for that. La ilaha illallah. Sayyidina Muhammad Rasulullah. So it's the, the, the clothing of taqwa. That's the most important clothing for us. May Allah Ta'ala bless us to wear that clothing and to take great, great pride in that clothing. And our time has expired. Allahumma salli ala rasuli da wa alihi wa sahbihi wa man wa So we do two more verses, inshallah, along those same lines of moving beyond the physical and moving towards the spiritual. So he mentions a poet who said, Mali shugul, mali shugulun siwahu, mali shugulu. ما يص ما ما يصرف عن قلبي هواه عذل ما أصنع إن جفا وقاب الأمل مني بد مني بدل ومنه مالي بدل لا إله إلا الله. He says I have no preoccupation other than him. He's preoccupied with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Well, I have absolutely no preoccupation. Uh, and the the critic will never turn my heart away from his love. The critic will never turn my heart away from his love. And and that love is expressed through obedience. So the critic, you know, why are you praying all the time? You need to get some sleep. Why do you stay up so late? Why do you get up so early? You need to get sleep. Yada yada yada. 
ما يصرف عن قلبي هواه عذب ليت العذول يدري ليت العذول العذول يدري if only my critic knew what I know and experienced what I experience then they would be in the same boat I'm in and they'd be criticizing themselves ما أصنع إن جفا وخاب الأمل what am I going to, what will I do if I'm treated harshly or my hopes are unfulfilled مني بدلون ومنه ماني بدلو he can do without me he has other than me but I have none other than him لا إله إلا الله Allah can do without us he has other servants but we can't do without Allah لا إله إلا الله so on that what I think is a very powerful and beautiful note Turn any questions or comments. There's a viewer, a viewer, viewer by the name of Zahir Al Mekki who wants, who sends his son. He remembers that he met you in Sham when he was a child. Mashallah. Ahlan wa sallam. The CD is Zahir Al Mekki. Barakallah fikum. Wa yatakabbal minkum. Wa athabakallah. Khaira thawab. Wa asan al jaza. Al hudurikum ma'ana. هذه الليلة المباركة. نعم. What are signs that we can perceive to know whether our inner self is corrupt or if our inner self is pure? Number one is <clears throat> what does our inner self, what is it preoccupied with? So is it preoccupied with Allah? Is it preoccupied with dunya? To the extent that it's preoccupied with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it's pure. And preoccupation with Allah doesn't just mean constantly dhikr, that constantly dhikring. That that's good, a good thing and it, it happens over time. But it also means thinking about our shari obligations. So is if you find out someone is sick, do you make plans to visit them? If you can't, do you make dua for them and pray for them? That's a shari obligation. So the combination of just being preoccupied with Allah and preoccupied with uh, doing the things and planning the things necessary to fulfill our shari obligations to the extent that we're constantly preoccupied with those things, our heart is pure and to the extent that we're not, then our heart can experience various degrees of impurity. Can you offer advice for someone whose health challenges prevent them from waking up early for tahajjud? Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the blessings you do enjoy. And because and be patient with your health challenges and maintain a good opinion of Allah. I mentioned today in Jumu'ah, Khutbatul Jumu'ah, Islamically, it was yesterday, here on the East Coast, uh, that if your health, for example, this is somewhat related to this particular question, prevents you from fasting, then just thank Allah for the food that you're eating while you're not fasting. And that elevates you to the station of the faster. So the, there's a hadith, uh, uh, that's a tribute to the Prophet Sallallahu It might be sound, but I, I haven't I looked into it. So I'll just say it's attributed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. At-ta'imu al-shakiru bimanzilat al-sa'imu sabir so the one who's eating and thanking Allah for his food, one who's eating and thanking Allah for their food, is in the same rank as the one fasting and patiently enduring the rigors of the fast. And so if your health is so, it's, it's similar. This is just the nighttime challenge. The daytime challenge, the ones one's health prevents them from fasting. Then through their shukr, they're in the 
manzila or the station and rank of the one who is fasting. If your nighttime challenges, health challenges, prevent you from tahajju, then thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those health aspects of health you do enjoy. You still have a sound mind. You have a, you have a sound heart despite whatever might be affecting you. And therefore, your shukr elevates you to the rank of the one who's praying. عَجِبًا لِلْأَمْرِ الْمُؤْمِنِ إِنَّ أَمْرَهُ كُلَّهُ لَهُ خَيْرٌ وَلَيْسَ ذَلِكَ لِأَحَدٍ إِلَّا الْمُؤْمِنِ The believer's affair is amazing. All of his affair is good. So we say it's all good. If you're a believer, that's true. It's all good. إِنَّ أَمْرَهُ كُلَّهُ لَهُ خَيْرٌ That's only for the Muslim. وَلَيْسَ ذَلِكَ ذَلِكَ لِأَحَدٍ إِلَّا لِلْمُؤْمِنِ إِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ سَرَاءُ شَكَرَ فَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَا If some good befalls him or her, they thank Allah for that good and that's best for them. وَإِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ ضَرَّاءُ سَبَرَ فَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَا And if some difficulty, harmful, painful things befall them, befalls him or her, they patiently endure it and that's best for them. So just thank Allah for the health you enjoy. Thank Allah for food. Thank Allah for the many blessings and bounties you have. And we, we pray that, that through your shukr, you'll be elevated to the status of the qa'im. Is cryptocurrency halal? Allahu alam. I haven't looked into it, nor have I consulted a mufti. So I cannot tell you if crypto cryptocurrency is halal. If I was Superman, I could tell you kryptonite is haram because it will kill you. But I'm not Superman, and so I can't comment on kryptonite either. So hopefully I can look into the issue, inshallah. How do we know if we are working too much and need to focus on dhikr and fikr? If your basic needs are met and then you and your family is living in a dignified fashion and you're still spending much of your time to get even more and you find yourself not able to fulfill the levels of dhikr and fikr, remembrance of Allah and concentration that you feel is appropriate for yourself, then you're working too much and you, you need to scale back. Uh, because human that they worship me. And so like I mentioned, Shari obligations entail that we take care of our families. But if our families needs are met, the Prophet ﷺ prayed that his livelihood would be sufficiency. So he didn't pray for abundance and excess and exuberance. He he prayed uh, for sufficiency. So may Allah Ta'ala bless us all with sufficiency. And some of us have excess, and that's good if it doesn't prevent us from fulfilling uh, our rites of prayer, vicar, fikr, etc. So because we need wealth, we need someone who can pay a lot of zakat. We need people can, who can pay for Zaytuna College. See my Zaytuna College tree right there? We need people to pay for Zaytuna College. And so that requires an excess and an abundance. But even them, if, if those people are not having time to adequately worship Allah and they're missing prayers and they never pick up their Quran, they should consider uh, some adjustments uh, in their uh, lifestyle. Allah give us tawfiq. Would it be better to be patient regarding harsh things said by unbelievers? How should we react to such as the recent blasphemous incidents? I don't follow the news in Ramadan. I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. But I can generally say, listen, if 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 the enemies of Islam know they could like use Muslims like a yo-yo. You know, yo, you throw it down, it goes down, you pick it up, comes up, 
two, down, up, walk the dog, round the world. If they can have us on a string responding to their every move, then we will never do anything positive. And so we should just ignore that and depute it to Allah. And that is what Allah wants us to do. So we're in a, a Meccan period of sorts. We're a small minority as the Muslim war in Mecca. Uh, we, we don't have power and influence in our society, relatively speaking. And most of the politicians who represent Muslims, they, they're not representing Muslims. They're representing, uh, you know, their female God or they're representing uh, the LGBTQ community. I'm not saying that to denigrate that community. I'm just saying who most of those politicians are representing. And, and so in reality, in name, they might say I'm the Muslim representative, but in reality. And so we're relatively powerless. So we're in a Meccan situation. And what did Allah tell the Muslims in that situation? hadith. <laughs> Leave it to Allah. Varni wal mukadhibin. Leave it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yakidun kayda wa akidu kayda. They're scheming and planning. I have a plan. Just leave them alone for a while. Let me deal with them. You do what you have to do, and I'll do what I do. So trust in Allah. Allah is in control. In the Meccan, in the Medinan period, in the Medinan period, the following verse was revealed. You're going to be tested. In your wealth and yourselves, your souls. And surely, emphatically said, You're going to hear from those given the scripture before you. Some of them, not all of them. Not even most of them. Most of them are decent people. But there's some evil, nasty people amongst the Jews and Christians who hate Islam. And you're going to hear not a little bit. Much abuse. Not a little. And then what does Allah tell us to do? And if you are patient, patient in relegating that to Allah, patient in continuing to do the things you need to do, the positive things you need to do, and remain conscious and cognizant and aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the right that Allah has over you, that's from prophetic resolve in your affair. That's what we're supposed to, that's my advice. That's my advice, brothers and sisters. Leave it to Allah and get on with what you're doing. And look, one of the, the, one of the vilest enemies of Allah, one of the advisors of, of Gert Wilders, and the European anti-Muslim racist, his, one of his closest advisors became Muslim. And how did he become Muslim? He was doing research to write the ultimate book to crush Islam once and for all. He's like, after my book, there won't be the need for any other book to put this Islamic 
thing to rest. And as he was researching, he's like, wait a minute. This isn't, what these people are doing isn't this. What I've been taught isn't this. And then he became Muslim. And the, the, you know what the clincher was? The clincher was when the Prophet Sallallahu forgave Hind. And then she became just a believer. And he had no animosity. This was the woman who had paid the assassin to kill his beloved uncle. This is a woman who chewed on the liver of his uncle after disemboweling him, having him disemboweled on the battlefield. This is the woman who was egging on these anti-Muslim campaigns. And she becomes Muslim and the prophet is like, she never did anything. He said, this has to be a messenger from Allah because a normal human being would not have this degree of forgiveness. So when Allah says, lead me with those beliers, those slanderers, those blasphemers, he can do whatever he wants. So it doesn't mean leave Allah to wipe them out. Leave Allah to bring them to Islam. The wisdom of Allah is penetrating. It's deep, brothers and sisters. Uh, what advice do you have young women who want to seek knowledge? Make a sincere intention and start seeking knowledge. Because, and the doors will open for you. The doors will open for you. Don't think, oh, well, the men, they're the only ones that ask you access to the shiuch. And now you have women uh, teachers, you have women organizations set up, Rabita, Rahma, and others, to teach women specifically. You have women scholars. So just make a sincere intention and then start. Just start. And then Allah Ta'ala will open the doors for you. But don't sit and do nothing because you're lamenting Oh, the brothers, they always get to talk to the sheikh after the lectures, and we have to stay back and, you know, elbow your way to the front. Like, get out of the way, brother. Excuse me. Pardon me. Lou. They'll get out of your way, you know, especially in public. Brothers are very shy in public. Oh, sisters. And, you know, go and go for it, as they say. Just There's nothing to it. Get on the Nike plan and just do it. I don't endorse Nike. You know, horrible business practices. Uh, but I do like the statement sometimes. Just do it. Don't, don't talk about it. Don't wait. Don't make excuses. Just do it. And you'll see the doors opening up for you. Inshallah ta'ala. So it's late over there. You folks have to go break fast. We can be here all night. Alhamdulillah. Allah bless you. Bless your families. Allah ta'ala bless all of the organizers who work to, so hard to put these programs together, sacrificing their time <clears throat> and utilizing their talent for something that uh, we hope is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We conclude by we're talking about Allah's love. And we When you ask something, first and foremost, ask it from Allah. Allahumma inna nas'aluka hubbak. Oh Allah, we ask you for your love. And the love of those who love you. Why? Because if, if, if we love those who love Allah and they become beloved to us and be friended and endeared to us, a person is on the deen of their friends. And love of the action which draws us near to your love. So may Allah Ta'ala bless you guys. May the last 10 days of Ramadan prove to be very, very blessed days and nights. And inshallah, we'll see you again tomorrow for the concluding session in this series. Again, we thank the organizers. Thanks, say, to the college. Uh, for the opportunity and may all of you support Zaytuna College. If you're not a monthly donor, you have 24 hours to sign up or else don't log on tomorrow. Just kidding. I'm just kidding. Don't.
don't not log on because you're not a monthly donor. But I'm just encouraging you with a very persuasive pitch to become a monthly donor, even if it's $5 a month. In Islam, it's quality, not quantity. Fear, ward off from yourself the fire of hell, even if it's with half a date you might give in charity. That could be half of all your wealth. The only thing you own, own in the world is one date. And when you give half of that date, you gave half of that wealth. The one who's sitting on a $10 million bank account and writes a check for $1 million, that's wonderful, but who gave more? Who gave more? The person only had a date and gave half of it, or the person that had $10 million and gave $1 million? That is the question. And I leave you to ponder that question. Allah bless all of you. This is Imam Zayd Shakir on behalf of Zaytuna College. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ahnan wa salam Ramadan Mubarak.